since moving to Japan, I had no choice but to pay attention to and be fascinated by the great array of traditional crafts and utensils available. Eating at my mother-in-law's became a fascinating new experience early on with all the styles of pottery and little plates that come with their own uses. I also quickly realised people are obsessed with food and presentation of food. This and my love for thrifting led me to discover and research the history of ceramics in Japan. I don't claim to know it all, nor I expect will I ever, because the history is so deep, but I do know what I like. I quickly found out about Mashiko and Mashikoyaki. This is the closest pottery town to Tokyo, so it was quite accessible to me. I quickly came to love it, with its extremely friendly inhabitants, and the feeling of pure creation for the love of it. There also seemed to be a unity in design sense. There is a feeling of working together to promote each other's businesses and to enthuse visitors about the town's history. A big part of its history is its connection to the Minge movement, or it is also called the Japanese folk craft movement. And more specifically, it is where arguably the most famous Japanese potter Hamada Shoji chose to set up his workshop. Hamada's work is effortlessly beautiful and timeless, with the simplicity of handmade design elements being the main focus. He practiced with joy and certainty, with every flick of the brush and pour of glaze planned and practiced over and over. If you watch him at work, you could believe he could work in his sleep. No two pieces are the same, and each one offers the user spontaneity and a unique pot. Hamada was at the forefront of the Mingi movement, along with a Kyoto potter called Kawaii Kanjiro. And its founder, the philosopher and art critic Yanagi Soetsu. The main aim for the movement was to highlight the unnamed craftsmen and the beauty of the everyday utensils they produced. It was the stepping back from industrialization and the westernization of Japan to appreciate the traditional craftsmen and unfettered design. The beauty of these functional objects Yanagi states, is in the use of natural materials and natural, handmade production essentially by a team of traditional craftsmen working together. Yanagi also spoke of spirituality in the craftsmen and their connection to nature and local materials available. He believed in karikido, or self-surrender to free oneself from the art of creation and allow nature to influence and create the object. The founders of the Mingi movement were all very aware of the world of design and were all collectors in their own right. Yanagi first became inspired by his discovery of Yi Dynasty ceramics Hamada was a prolific collector of antiques and sketched designs and ideas from these inspirations constantly. I myself have fallen in love with objects in a different way since discovering the movement. Appreciating further what I have and adding pieces of joy and inspiration to my collection. Though Japan and Britain are on opposite sides of the world, Leaders in the art scene seem to be of the same mentality around the 1920s and 30s. The Mingi movement and the arts and crafts movement seem to go hand in hand in the shift away from mass production and the appreciation of natural materials 
and nature as a teacher for design. Yanagi was surely influenced by the great William Morris and his philosophies about art after being introduced to it by British potter Bernard Leach, who also had strong connections to the Mingave movement, and specifically to Hamada, who travelled to England and helped him build a Japanese-style kiln. They all shared their knowledge and ideals, coming to the consensus that craftsmen should not be lost to industrialization and cheap, mass-produced, poor-quality items. What joy is there in owning the same poor-quality items that everyone else does? This is how we fell out of love with our belongings, and they have now become thoughtless, dispensable and trend-driven items with little value. Good craftsmanship is timeless and stands the test of time to be loved and mended and passed down. Yanagi was very singular in his ideals of beauty, and not everyone will share those and love what the movement produced, but at least there is the takeaway notion of appreciation for handmade objects created with nature in mind. Personally, I do love the designs, not all of them, but I can pick and choose as an individual. Yanagi talks about individualism. The solemn existence of the individual is a fundamental reality in which we have unshakable faith. A life without this individuality is a meaningless existence. Cultivating our individuality is thus our one and only duty. Our lifetime is the time allotted to us to perfect our individuality. Human life is none other than the endless pursuit of our inner desires. It is only when we bring our inner desires to life that we may learn the value of our existence. My work is the practice of me releasing my inner desires and allowing them to be created. I believe in experiencing life and rituals better through the objects we choose to live with. The pieces I love the most created in the state of Tarikido. There is joy in being educated on the artists who made your objects and their individual techniques and vision. I liken it to the joy of being around other creative minds and to discovering their individual point of view. Let us all flow through life not only with our own desires, but with the appreciation and understanding that everyone is different and we each desire something different. I will continue to appreciate each person's creative output and support makers putting good work into the world. <laughs>